Welcome back to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. The Milwaukee Public Museum features 16,000 feet of space in which to host temporary traveling exhibitions. The newest exhibit is one that has garnered lots of attention because if you haven't heard, big is here. Patricia Burke is the paleontologist at the Milwaukee Public Museum and she's here to tell us more about the Ultimate Dinosaurs Exhibit. How are you, Patricia? Good, good. Thanks for having us. Thank you for being here. And uh, one of the most spectacular discoveries is at the Milwaukee Public Museum now through May 15th. Tell us more about it. Well, we have 16 fully articulated dinosaurs from the Southern Hemisphere. Mm -hmm. So they're a little different than any ones you've seen before and they're much bigger <laughs> as, you, as you kind of picked up on. Uh -huh. with, um, one of those dinosaurs is Giganotosaurus, which is a bigger, badder, I would <laughs> guess you'd say, uh, 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 version of T-Rex. Okay. Um, it lived about 60 million years or 30 million years before mm -hmm. T-Rex, so they didn't actually butt heads, but um, he was much larger and he had much sharper teeth, weighed about a ton and a half more. Wow. So this guy's big. <laughs> Put it and, in lightly. Yes, right. exactly. <laughs> but you can also see um, huge sauropods. Uh, it's just a fascinating exhibit and it's material that has uh, come to light in the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. So most of the North American dinosaurs were discovered, well the earliest one was discovered over a hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. So these things are very recent for a paleontologist. <laughs> yeah, and so what we're seeing is this is uh, new research that's going along with these particular dinosaurs. As you mentioned, they're not the uh, dinosaurs that we all kind of envision that we've seen growing up from the North American part of the continent. It's uh, when these uh, continents kind of broke apart and just like we have people that have different characteristics in different mm -hmm. parts of the world, same thing goes for these dinosaurs, right? Correct. Um, about 150 million years ago, the giant uh, supercontinent of Pangaea mm -hmm. split into a northern and southern part and so these dinosaurs started to go you know, go down a different evolutionary path about 150 million years ago. And you can see it when you come to the museum. You'll yeah. see the different size, the different, um, they each had, they look a little bit familiar, but then when you look closer, you're like, oh, that's weird. Or oh. The weird thing for me, and I did mm -hmm. have the uh, pleasure of checking out this exhibit already, mm -hmm. was uh, some of the dinosaurs that had these huge bodies and then their head was like this tiny, big. Tiny, yeah. tiny, And it yes. just was a weird like look, mm -hmm. especially when you're looking at the skeleton of it. But with that said, this is an interactive exhibit. So uh, many times all we see are the bones put together of the dinosaurs. But you guys have this uh, high tech way of actually seeing what it looked like when it was in its full uh, mass, I guess it's safe to say. Right, right. Yeah. We, um, it's called augmented reality. Uh -huh. And well, you'll see the skeletons as they were found by the scientists, but you can um, essentially lift an iPad up and it, uh, as you look through it, it puts the flesh and uh, skin on the dinosaur. And the dinosaur will even move a little bit, so you might hear them growl at you in the middle of your uh, viewing pleasure. Yeah, just to give the viewers at home an idea of just how big these mm -hmm. particular dinosaurs are, you brought us some teeth. I thought and we could compare. My goodness, we have we have a, a Giganotosaurus tooth, uh -huh. and we have a T. Rex tooth. Okay, and they were both predators. Of course, T. Rex you're familiar with from all of all of the movies mm -hmm. and everything else. But their teeth were um, sharp, but they were sort of stout. Okay. And they were more for cutting and crunching. So these guys would, their teeth would break off and a new one would come in. Mm -hmm. Well, Giganotosaurus had that these. That like a little, blade of a knife. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it could have been a switchblade. Oh for my it. gosh. So it's, it's skeleton or its skull was full of teeth like this and mm -hmm. if you feel the edge you can feel that it won't cut you. I oh, think, but, it's but it's sharp it, though. It, yeah, and yeah. it's serrated. And, and it's it bigger than your hand. Yes, <laughs> yes, and they would get to be about eight inches long wow. when it was fully grown. And so, uh, yes, and they were dining on those 
well, at least they're associated with those giant sauropods, one mm -hmm. of those giant sauropods you saw in the exhibit. So yeah. they probably were eating, that was probably part of the food chain for them. Wow, and this just gives everybody at home an idea of how interesting and exciting this exhibit is. It's only the fourth place in the world that this exhibit has been seen, right here in Milwaukee. Yes, yes. How lucky, how were you able to land something like this? Well, you know, we have some research that has gone on at the museum on mm -hmm. dinosaurs, and so those connections helped. Mm -hmm. And we went after it too. Yeah. We wanted to bring this to Milwaukee so that, you know, it was convenient for our people to see it. And they're fascinating animals. Yeah. And you got everybody so excited when you teased us with this big egg, and many times we couldn't figure out what it was. All it said was hashtag big is here. So that was a great way to get everybody excited. And then finally that egg that was in Red Arrow Park downtown, it hatched and big really was here. So are we going to see more signs of the dinosaurs you being can here follow, around the city? You can follow big throughout the city. Okay. So keep your eyes open. He, you might see a, a path of destruction. <laughs> through through Milwaukee and you'll know who has who has passed before that really does make it fun though not only for uh, kids but adults as well and this exhibit being that I have had a chance to see it I think that you've set it up for uh, all ages to really uh, get involved and it was funny we were looking at the um, the uh, digital thing of the dinosaurs and we said the adults are going to be telling the oh, kids yeah. hurry up <laughs> it's my turn you know so come on move on <laughs> It's just something for everyone to look forward to. Now, uh, the mayor uh, was a part of your press conference when this was all getting underway, and he talked about uh, the impact that something like this could have on the city of Milwaukee. Yes, I mean, it brings people downtown. Mm -hmm. you're, it brings families together. It's it's a gen economic generator, too. Yeah. And looking at the exhibit itself, um, I was immediately uh, thinking and wondering, well, whatever happened, these things are so big, how did they become extinct? So that's a whole nother interesting aspect of things. Um, now, there's always arguments between scientists, but uh, <laughs> our, the scientists that work at the Milwaukee Public Museum mm -hmm. uh, did work on the asteroid theory of mm -hmm. the dinosaur's extinction, and so we have a little uh, section at the very end of the exhibit that's our own work and you can stop and see the the boundary layer where there's an impact layer in the in the rock and it's all just so it. educational at mm -hmm. the same time so I can see a lot of science classes coming through kind of reiterating what they may have learned in the classroom and then you guys also offer a uh, ultimate dinosaurs workshop for kids grades uh, one through three Yes. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that's something that teachers can look into as well? Yes, yes. Okay, so and there, there's a little more hands-on um, things that they can do and... Break it down for break the kids it down, to yes. understand, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, what's your website for people to get more information? Well, go to mpm.edu for all information about Ultimate Dinosaurs and even all of our uh, permanent exhibits because mm -hmm. we have... Uh, North American dinosaurs are in our permanent exhibits on right. the first floor. Okay, and we were talking about uh, all of the different names that go along. We nicknamed, uh, say it for me, Gig... Giganotosaurus. Giga <laughs> Giganotosaurus. We named it the Big Gig so that I could say it, but uh, we did, <laughs> personally. Yes. And it's and it really is the original, because way before our, our own <laughs> summer... It's so uh, fitting big since gig. he's here in Milwaukee. <laughs> so how do they earn these particular names? Um, they're usually, uh, well, first of all, the scientist who discovers them and describes them gets mm -hmm. to name them, but they usually try to make them sort of understandable. For instance, Giganotosaurus is a uh, southern, giant southern lizard, ah. and T. rex is terrible lizard, so it's the saurus is lizard, and then the descriptor is the front end of that okay, name. See? So, and you put them together, and that's actually an activity in the, uh, in the exhibit is, uh, what's in a name so you can learn about what's in the name and also create your own name. Yeah, and I also found in the exhibit where uh, one of the dinosaurs had some type of fish kind of stuck in its mouth or something and that's how scientists were also able to kind of figure out what they eat and mm -hmm. how they uh, 
kind of search for food and yes, things of that, that nature. That was, uh, that was Suki Mimas. Okay. And he actually. She's so good. <laughs> he, he has a, uh, a skull, a long, narrow skull uh, with teeth sort of like a crocodile, mm -hmm. but he's not a crocodile, and he, and they actually found a fish scale on, associated with his teeth in the fossil record, so they were able to surmise that he ate fish. Yeah. And all, of course, his, his dent dentition helped <laughs> identify that, too. But that was, I <laughs> mean, all the things that we've discussed is really just uh, giving everybody an idea of what they have to look forward to down at the Milwaukee Public Museum. And this new exhibit is just the tip of the iceberg. So I thank you so much for coming by and giving us all this great information. And we want everybody to definitely take advantage of this exhibit and everything else you have to offer at the Milwaukee Public Museum. Thank you. Thank you again. Patricia Burke is the paleontologist at the Milwaukee Public Museum. Again, you can log on to mpm.edu for information on anything that we've discussed on the Ultimate Dinosaur Exhibit. That's going to do it for today's show. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. As always, I thank you for watching, and I hope you join us again next week as we take another look at our issues, Milwaukee. Have a great day.